Today I'm going to be working with some small components and to give you an idea of how small they are I thought I'd do a comparison here. On the left hand side we have a grain of brown rice. Right next to it here is a sesame seed and as we move across here this little cube you see right over here is a grain of salt. On the right hand side we have granulated sugar and all the way over here we have a 01005 size component and that is what we're going to be working with today. Today I have an iPad Pro 11 inch that came in with charging issues after a repair so let's plug this in and see what kind of charging information we get from our meter here because when I plug it in I, do, I can hear the tone so it is turning on, or it's actually on already. And we are pulling 0 0.04 amps. Let's see if we can focus on that a little better. And let's try this. Okay, hopefully you can see that. We're actually at zero now. It's showing 15 volts. When I first plug it in, we've got 0 0.05 but eventually it just goes down to zero. So I'm not sure what that means, but my guess would be some sort of battery communication issue because that is the number one problem that we see come in after someone has attempted to isolate the battery improperly. So let's get this under the scope and see what we can find. Well, I was just about to isolate the battery myself and then I took a closer look and you'll see right over here We've actually got what looks like a resistor hanging out next to the battery connector there. And then we've got some pads here that uh, something's been torn off of, obviously. So I think we might have got a little rough, uh, probably prying. I'm not sure how or why you would pry exactly at that spot. It's kind of unusual. But it also makes me wonder if there's anything else funny going on here. You can see the impression from that capacitor there. Hopefully that's nothing unusual because sometimes the pressure from the sticker will do that. But this is definitely going to be an issue. Um, let's see, oh look at that. So we have a couple components. We have this, whatever that happens to be. All right, so we have something right here. Not sure what that is. And then we've got, like I said, what appears to be a resistor right over here. A Couple things missing there. So I am gonna go ahead and uh, take the battery screw out, but I wanna be very careful because whatever these components are, if we can figure out where they go, we might be able to put them back. And I don't have a donor motherboard for this particular model here. But fortunately, it looks like the schematic has been leaked, so at least we can figure out what we're working with if it comes down to that. Oh, geez, yeah, we got a mess under here, so it's like pretty much everything got or was affected, I should say. Okay, there's one more component we can actually save, hopefully. And so we are missing, wow, we're missing one, two, three, four, five, six, maybe more. Quite a bit of stuff there. I think it's all isolated to this location, but this is all important. Uh, the majority of this stuff we need to have. So we're missing one, two, three, four, five, six, maybe seven components. All right, so let's take a look at what we have missing here. I don't want to go into too much detail on this, but basically your battery has a negative and a positive terminal, but it's also got some lines that are connected to the tablet in order to control how it charges. So it knows when it's low, when it needs to be charged, how much current to allow through and so forth. And that's what this circuit has to do with uh, these components in this area. They're all related to that circuit. As you can see here, we have something called PPVAT underscore VCC. That is the four volts that is gonna go to the battery. Um, it's also going to have the battery output to the tablet to power it when it's not charging. So that's pretty much what this is for, and that's what these three capacitors here are connected to. So we're going to be replacing all three of these 
because they are there for a reason, obviously. And again, I like I said, I don't want to go into too much detail on this, but the important thing is that these two other contacts over here, which I'll show you later on in the video, they serve a purpose as well for the communication between the tablet and the battery. And most of this stuff is going to be connected to those. So like this resistor that we're missing here, this has to do with board temperature. It's called board underscore temp2 underscore p. And there is a system that prevents the tablet from charging when it's at too high of a temperature. That could be a problem for various reasons. You know, obviously you don't want your battery getting too hot. So I assume that that's what this has to do with. Um, these two resistors, actually all three of these resistors that we're missing up here are critical. If we don't have these, we're going to be missing some information that the tablet needs to know how to charge properly. So over here, we have an I2C line, and on the other side, it is connected to PP1V25 underscore S2. So we've got a one volt, uh, one and a quarter volt line going through here. And then you can, you can see it's connected to this resistor here, which on the opposite side is another I2C circuit. And anytime you have I2C, you're generally transmitting information. And this information is going to be required in order for the battery or the tablet to know what to do with the battery when it's plugged in as far as the charging uh, end of it goes. Over on the other side here, we have gas gauge. And gas gauge is pretty much what it sounds like. It is a name that they've given to this part of the circuitry that monitors the level of the battery. So when you see gas gauge, that we're, that's what we're talking about. How much gas is in the tank, how much charge is in the battery, and what does the tablet choose to do with it from there out. So here we've got again one, two, three, four, five, six, seven components that we are going to want to replace in order to get this thing as close to being factory as we possibly can. And you can see this number one pin is connected over here, which goes through U8900 and on the opposite side connects to the gas gauge circuit. And then number two over here goes to the number four, which presumably goes through to, uh, let's see, that's gas gauge 2.5, most likely is connected uh, from this side to this side. I'd have to look at the schematic to double check. But in any case, you can see all this stuff needs to be present in order for this area to communicate with the tablet. I was able to pull off three, so yeah, half of them are gone, and we have to figure out where these are. So, again, I will go ahead and isolate the, the battery, because I want to see if they did any damage to the connector underneath here. And hopefully you can see everything is intact here. What I'm looking for are these two very big connectors here, and then a small one to the left of that which you can see, and then over here we've got two and two. So two of the wide ones and two of the narrow ones. So it looks like as far as our battery connector goes, everything is fine. Uh, the problem, I believe, is gonna be here because I know we've got some I2C lines that uh, are involved with the charging system. So we need to get at least these resistors restored and hopefully find everything that is missing here. And with any luck, might be able to do this without pulling the motherboard out. I'm also gonna take this sticker off the rest of the way just to be sure we're not missing a whole bunch of other stuff, which is entirely possible. I guess that's why Apple put these sticker, puts these stickers here so they'll hold the components when they get torn off the motherboard. All right, yeah, so everything else looks fine. I believe our problem is isolated to this area right here. So this is gonna be fun. We'll start by uh, getting some leaded solder on there momentarily. I'm going I'm to see if I can track down the components first of all. Okay, so we're going to do these one at a time. Turns out one of the resistors that we saved is a 10K ohm, and that is going to go right here, this direction. So I'm going to go ahead and put some leaded solder on all these and hopefully make this easier because I would prefer not to pull the motherboard out of here if that is an option. We'll find out shortly.
And you can probably tell by the way these behaved that we've got some ground over in this area and that's going to be the tough part to melt. Actually this is getting sticky already so I'm going to go ahead and clean up this flux. Alright, so we have a resistor going right here. Make sure that looks, yeah, it should be fine. I think that will sit without any issues. And we're kind of close to the battery, but I think we'll be okay here, heat-wise. I'll get this sticker off before it melts. So that'll work. Like I said, the tricky part's going to be the ground, which we don't have too many of. I think our flux is still good. Let's see if we can chase down a couple more components. I think what I might do is try to hit these first and put the big one on last. All right, so this is going to be a 2.2 over here on the left-hand side. Let's get this one on. Actually, I think we can do a couple at a time here. So we don't have to keep reheating the board. So I'm going to try to track down another one of those. And turns out getting these components is going to be a process. So I am going to go ahead and attach this one for now, just so we don't lose it. And then I will try to track down either a donor motherboard or order these components from Mauser, who hopefully has everything that we need find out soon. All right, my components came in. And we are ready to hopefully get this thing working again. And one of the other useful things about flux is keeping things from moving around. So I'm going to warm the board up here just a tiny bit, just enough to melt some flux. And we're going to use that to organize our parts and hopefully we can get them all on in one shot. That is the idea. I didn't warm it up quite enough there. I want this to flow. There we go. Alright, so I'm going to set my components on here. I only have too much. And we will, I don't know, I might do all of them at once, might do a couple at a time. Let's see. What makes sense? You know, I don't want to have to deal with these running together, so I might just do a couple at a time. Yeah, I think I'll just do two at a time for now. I don't want to have to do this more than once. And these small ones are tricky because due to their size and being so close together, surface tension can actually work against you. This big one shouldn't be an issue, but let's give it a shot see what happens here. Alright, those two should be good.
Let's go ahead and get these on for now. Battery temperature seems to be okay. No, don't do that. Alright, those should stay long enough. Get this last one. That one's gonna be a pain. Alright, I think that is going to work. We'll uh, take some measurements, make sure nothing's shorted. And with any luck, this tablet will charge again. Okay, I've got 298 there. So we should be good. And this cap says 595. So yeah, nothing shorted. Let's see what happens. Alright, so we've got this thing all put back together. I did actually take out the motherboard to uh, get that stuff cleaned up because I just didn't feel comfortable putting so much heat on there. But let's plug this in and see what we get. All right, we're pulling half an amp, 0.9, one amp, 1.8. And I don't know if you hear that, heard that, but it actually just powered up. So when we plug it in, we can hear that it is, in fact, on. I'm going to flip the charger over here. And we've got a good charge in both directions. So that is a success.